Well, thanks so much, Dave, Alyssa, Jane, and the balance of the team. Next week, there will be a few more testimonies, I believe. Is that correct, Dave? All right, so come on back. Besides the broad fry, we'll have some more Mexico updates next week. And I thought I'd start with something a little goofy. My name is Pastor Derek, and this is going to be a new season. Nope, nope. Um, my name is Pastor Keith, and this is going to be a new season. Nope. My name is Pastor Mike, and this is going to be Choices That Bring Contentment. And if it's not good, see the men that are taking care of the new season. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, um, Choices That Bring Contentment. Something that a few months back when Pastor Derek knew he was going to be on vacation and asked me to speak, I had kind of, I always go before the Lord when I know I have the opportunity to teach. What do you want me to teach on, Lord? And he brought that title of the message. I didn't know what the body looked like, but I knew that I needed to talk on things that bring contentment. And so I just wrote that note down that that would probably be the title. I go, and a couple weeks into it, we're into this new season, and I'm thinking last week, I pray again, Lord, do you need me to try and build a message based upon what's going on here? And he said, no, bring a message that says, choices that bring contentment. And so here we go, people. Here's something that, Again, I just want to thank the missions team. But, you know, here, here's an airplane flying. It's a small commuter plane. It's going along. The pilot walks out and drops three parachutes down. And there's four people on board. And he has a parachute on his back. And he says, the plane's going down. We're not going to make the airway. You need to t grab a parachute and jump. So he jumps. The next guy looks. He grabs a parachute. And he says, I'm a world-renowned heart surgeon. My pa patients need me. He jumps. The next guy grabs a pack, and he says, I'm a rocket scientist, one of the smartest men in the world. The, my country needs me. He jumps. The last two standing there with one pack is a Catholic priest and a 10-year-old boy. And the father looks down at the son, and he begins shaking his head. The 10-year-old boy looks up, and he says, don't worry, father. The smartest man in the world, the rocket scientist, grabbed my backpack. We're okay. You see, choices, people, choices that bring contentment, choices change our lives. Choices will change who you are. Have you ever regretted some decisions? Have you ever regretted not taking advantage of some opportunities? Choices. There's opportunities. Let me just share another little story here before I move into the Word. College professor coming up with his final exams. History professor, probably one of my favorite subjects. I love history. I love American history specifically. I've studied a lot of American history. A lot of you don't know that part of my heritage is, is that I'm part Indian. And so I've studied a lot of about American history and specifically some of the Indians and some of those things just to find out some useless facts other than I wanted to know. But anyhow, this history professor is renowned by all the students about having huge, tough exams, hard to get a good grade. And all the students come in on that day of the final exams with a little bit of fear and trembling, and they stand, they sit down on their desks, and he begins to talk to them about the importance of finishing well, about making good choices in life. And he said, I'm going to give some of you an opportunity here that you might not have expected when you walked in this room. He said, any one of you who wants to just receive a guaranteed C, raise your hand. And the room was deadly silent as they looked around and they thought, really? Really, this is possible? And then all of a sudden, they begin, one person raises their hand. One person raises their hand and then with the comfort of one raising, then about half the room raised their hand. And he said, okay, I'll get your names. Those of you who raised your hands, you're dismissed. You'll get a C choices. You see, they were afraid of their, either their lack of study or their confidence and abilities to get a B or an A, so they settled for average. How many times in life do we settle for average people? Choices. Choices that can either take you up or take you down. And sometimes we just play it safe and stay right there. I'm going to take that C. I'm not going to take a chance of failing. I don't believe I can raise up and be more. Choices that will bring contentment, people, will allow you to achieve more than what you ever thought you could. Become more than what you ever expected out of life. And anyhow, then he, said, then he begins to lecture those students. And he's saying, some of you are going to be great leaders. 
Some of you are going to go on and do some awesome things, both in the communities and in the world. And he said, I believe if you come and find your Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, some of you are going to just do exceptional things. He said, those of you who are prepared to take the test, turn it over. There was one question on the exam. It said, and it wasn't even a question. It simply said, congratulations, you've earned an A. Because you chose to do something that others wouldn't do. Choices that lead to contentment oftentimes require us making choices or experiencing something different or doing something different that others aren't willing to do so that you can become more than what others choose to become. Choices. How about in your jobs? How many of us have ever taken a job that we really didn't want or we really didn't like? And we begin to work at it like that too, right? The, re the rest of our rank and file people who are there doing it with us, yeah, this blasted cussing job, they don't pay me enough. They want this, they want this out of me. The, I, I'm not even paid half of what I'm worth, and they expect me to do more. They've got another thing coming. You see, we're making that choice to serve without excellence. You're not giving your manager, you're not giving your supervisor any reason to pay you more or promote your people. It's a choice that you're making. You're settling for that C. You're settling for average, maybe even moving towards a D, or maybe even the pink slip and failure. There's options, there's choices. Use that job that you don't even like and serve and do it with excellence because there's only a way that that's the only way that you're going to get promoted or find a new job and be able to move on, to, to raise yourself from a C to a B. And you cannot go from a C to an A unless you, go be, unless you become a B, people. You see choices. You can go from a C to a D or C to an F or C to a B or an A. It's where do you want to be? How about in our relationships? How many of us, we go get married, we're just looking for somebody, and we, we're ready to date, and we're ready to get married? We're looking for a C. Yeah, right. You see, we think, all of us, we think when we say, I do, and it's done, that we had the right one, the special man, the special woman that God created just for me. And then all of a sudden, guess what? We, we turn over and we look at them. Man, she looks cute kind of sleeping, but I think she's a C. You know, when I get ready and go to work at the office, there's an A waiting. Huh? Some of you need to hear that. that. That's why we're going to talk about choices and contentment, because some of you need to hear this. This is how sometimes life is lived. Our choices in our mind, we begin to look over, we're married two years, five years, whatever, 10 years, 20 years, and we begin to see each other as simply average. Not, not fulfilling my dreams, not fulfilling my plans, not becoming the man or woman that we thought they would be when we said, I do. And here we are, a C, great. Maybe it's even moving down to D level. And then some of us skid out and we hit the F level and it finalizes. What about spending some time learning how to become a couple? You're getting this for free. We haven't gotten to point one, people. What, 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 if, what if some of us learn how to make some choices that will raise us to a B or even an A in our relationship? that we can move on and become more than what we ever thought was possible. You know it is possible. I know Maureen thought she was getting an A, but when we actually got married about two years in, we were two Cs, and just kind of bucking our heads, trying to make a whole circle and keep it together. And eventually we began to figure some things out. And here, let me tell you this for free, people. Now, you ladies, it's not a time to be elbowing your husband. Or guys, it's not a time to be looking around the room if you realize that you suddenly have a C and looking for an A. Understand this here, people. Get this. There's times that you need to be able to help each other change. And the only way that you can do that, so many of us spend a lifetime of trying to correct him or her or make him or her perfect. Those are choices, people, that are not going to last. They're choices that will not bring contentment. Here I teach people on Thursday nights all the time, the only person that you can change is you. Let the Lord begin to change you. Let him change you to become the man, to become the woman that God created you to be, and pray for your spouse and watch what will happen in your marriage, people. All of a sudden, you yourself 
will go from a C to a B, and he or she's going to want to follow along with you. It's going to be a simple choice that will lead to some contentment. And contentment brings peace. It brings happiness. It brings joy. And your relationships will begin to flourish. How about your relationships with the Lord? We accept the big C. We, 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 we accept the big G to become the big C, the big Christian. But now we're living life as a C. Oh, half the week we're in the world. We're just kind of dippling around, not quite falling off the edge. And the other time, then, what Sunday morning's coming. I got to get in there. I can worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everything's good today. I got my Christian face on. My coat hanger's in my mouth, and my smile is wide. But then Monday's coming. We're back to the office, and we're looking at that A because we've got to see at home. Choices that are not bringing godly contentment into your life, people. Choices are powerful. Are you, are you losing, using them to become all that God created you to be? You see, here's what you need to do in that situation. You see, I, well, I've been a pastor for a lot of years, and the Back when I first was doing ministry at a different church, it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Bible studies in between, prayer meetings on Wednesday night, and a lot of church. Many of us as believers, we, we don't make the choices to feed into our lives during the week and Sundays of seven days away. You need to make some choices of getting into a discipleship group, a Bible study. Come on Thursday nights. Do some things to learn, to equip you, to be, continue to have choices to stay strong all week long. You know, when you look over and that A is now coming on to you or flirting with you, where's your mind going, people? The C at home certainly won't like it, if that's what you're thinking. Come on now, we need to learn how to make godly choices. And, and the only way that comes is why we allow growth into our life. We allow lasting change to become part of who you and I are. The DNA that God placed upon our heart and soul with salvation means more than just accepting the Lord. It means now you have a responsibility of getting to know what's in his word, letting that begin to change you, learning how to walk with the Holy Spirit, developing a prayer life. Becoming more. And that's how you go from a C to a B. And the Lord says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I promoted you to an A. You see, and then to whom much are given, much is required. And that speaks specifically of me as leaders, but it can be you because our job as pastors are simply to equip you to go and do the work of the ministry. So that means we're all leaders. We all have share that same burden of being able to be an A to somebody else. How often has we failed at that game of Christianity, people? Your point number one, if you're taking notes in the bulletin, is simply the Lord is our helper in all problems of life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the Lord has the answers to every situation that we're facing? The Apostle Paul, very good. Some of, two of us believe it. At least, at least where, where there's belief, there can be hope, and where there's hope, faith can be activated. So we have something to work with here today. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little. Sometimes it's, you know, Apostle Paul is teaching us something really important here. Sometimes we just don't grasp a hold of some of these scriptures. Let me help you. Understand this. It's not how much we have or we don't have that matters. You see, you might be sitting there as a C. Some of us might even be a D where it comes down to what we have. I know what it's like to be a D. I grew up on a farm. We were rather poor. We never went without food but we never had anything extra for things that I might have wanted. So I always considered myself poor. And yet I, for, my mom taught me so many things to learn how to be content in the situation that I was in. And my dad showed me how to work hard, and they took me to church, and they laid that foundation of faith. And you see, even though I may have thought that that was a D, they were giving me at least a C-level start or a B considered to m many more people. And you see, you have to understand... 
your choices are your perspectives, even though I felt, well, we're poor. Probably to many other people, we weren't. It was my perspective. You see, I chose to accept D-level thinking through school, through a lot of school. Where is your choices, then? Where is your mind, and where is your thinking of where you are at? And if you are a D, what are you going to do to raise yourself to become a C? How are you allowing the Lord? Some of you need to hear this stuff, people. Choices that will bring contentment. It'll change your relationships. It'll change where you work. It'll change your neighborhood. It'll change your community. It'll change this church. If we learn how to make godly choices, people, just watch what it'll do. You see, our attitude is determined by our choices, which has a direct impact upon your contentment. Your perception of how you see things changes your attitude, and that chooses, causes you to be either, either to be happy or sad or somewhere in between. You can go in your mind from a C to an A, right, slamming right back down to an F in a matter of somebody saying some few words to you or some circumstance or opening a letter in the mail. Our attitudes and our emotions can be all over the board, but where are you living life? You see, if Apostle Paul's trying to teach us here, if you have a little or if you have a lot, can you learn to be content where the Lord has you at the moment? Understand this. You see, you need, this is something that I probably learned just six months ago. I've read that script, this one particular scripture, a lot of years of my life. And then as as I was trying to analyze some areas of my life and some things that I've done in life and some things that as I'm preparing a message for Thursday. And you know the scripture that says, we make our plans, but the Lord directs our steps. You see, if you're a C and you need desire to move up to a B or a B or an A, are you, giving, are you making some plans? Are you giving the Lord something to direct in your life? You see, there's, there's times when I was down there Maybe because I know what it was like to be a D. And I worked hard to become a C and moving on up to an A. I always have different ideas or thoughts on how to improve or a little business idea or something going on in my mind. Because what I've desired to do is give the Lord something to work with. Instead of grumbling about circumstances or situations, you need to learn to be content when you have a little. But you also need to, you see, you don't need to go without a job. If I had no job, I'd be out mowing lawns or cleaning gutters or cleaning toilets or something, I'd find something to do to at least take care of the basic needs of what needed to happen. You see, are you giving the Lord something to work with? You, you need to make some plans so that he can direct your steps, people. It'll help you raise you from where you're at to get to where you need to go. And somewhere in between is where the Lord has chosen you a plan and a purpose for your life, a goal, a purpose, He created you for his pleasure, for his purpose. Have you found what you are called to do? Man, that'll help you go from a C to a B immediately when you know what on earth you were created for. And from there, it's just learning how to get equipped to handle that purpose, and that'll move you to an A. You see, this stuff is not real hard, but it does take a little effort. Grab a hold of this statement. A contented mind is the greatest blessing that a person can ever enjoy here in this world. You see, if you, if, no matter what situation that you're in, if you don't have some happiness, some joy, some sanity, some peace, of all people, you're most miserable. But a contented mind is one of the greatest blessings that you can enjoy here on this earth, people. And, when you, and grab a hold of this one. You see, when you learn to be content, what a contented life does, it squeezes all the good out of everything that it can from whatever situation that you're in. Now that's learning how to live under contentment, people. Squeezing all the good out of, regardless of what circumstance there is. It might not even be something that you like, but you need to have to learn to look at it with a different perspective and re-squeeze that good out. Find something good even in a miserable situation. Or in that miserable situation, at the very least, you need to be asking, Lord, what is it I need to learn here? How, after I learn this message, money, I might be able to help somebody else when they face it. You see, now you're handling life 
like not a C, but like a B or an A. Choose to raise up above where you may be and become all that God intended for you to be. The key to contentment, though, is consideration. This applies to mostly those of us who are Christ followers, and let me make a few statements there. First of all, consider who you are and be satisfied with that. Consider what you have and learn how to be satisfied with that. Consider what God has done in your life and be satisfied with that. Now, understand this. I'm not talking about learning how to be complacent. I'm talking about learning how to be content. I believe the Lord has more blessings for you and you and myself than what we ever have the faith to receive. I believe someday in heaven that we're going to find out that God had in store more for each of us. And we just didn't either have the plan so that he could direct our steps, or we didn't have the courage to step out and take a test and to receive or have that active faith to have everything that he desires for you and I to have people. Choices. You can choose to have a C life or you can choose to have an A life. In between, God will help you. He'll give you the equipping. He'll give you his word. He'll give you his Holy Spirit. He'll bring others alongside of you. Prayer, power when it's unleashed. I believe as a believer I need to know who I am in Christ, that God loves me, that he's forgiven my past, and that he has a future for good. And then when some things come into my life that tend to take my attitude from a B or an A down to a C, I have to quickly, with the Holy Spirit's help, say, Mike, you know this isn't how the Lord would have you handle it. Don't don't turn back to the old ways of anger or pouting or depression. But Lord, help me to focus on now, what do you need me to see out of this situation? How can it change? Lord, you've got the answers. And give the problem to him. Instead of going to sleep worried about it. Learn to handle it with contentment, people, and your choices and your life. Even if your finances aren't going up, even if your relationship's not getting better, as individuals, your life is going to be so much better. And you see, that's what the Lord desires to have with you, is to create change in all of us. Let me give you an example of contentment. The old adage is that money can't buy happiness. Let me use three forms. Small amount of money, cell phone. Medium amount of money, new car. Large amount of money, new house. Here's what happens to all three of these items, people. They go from cool to comfortable to ordinary. The more we use them or the more we possess them. Those possessions which we once thought was making us happy, the greatest, newest technology, got to have this, got to have it. The longer you own it, the more you use it, it just becomes ordinary. Something that's really no longer, you see that A item that you purchased all of a sudden is now a C in your pocket. Choices that bring contentment. Paul's example is an uplifting, and understand this, it's a long first point. The last two will be short, I promise you. Paul was uplifting as he serves as a wonderful example, saying he learned how to be happy or content with a little or with a lot. Now, I will agree, if you can have a little more coin in your wallet or in your checkbook, life does get a little easier. And it is easier sometimes to be happy when you can go eat wherever you want or buy most of what you want. There is no doubt about that. But there comes a time in your life you cannot go from a lot to a little in the Lord's plan of progress. You need to go through the steps of life. Here's what I know. I can, I can remember back when I was in college, Maureen and I were living in what we called Dump 8. It was a trailer called D8, and we called it Dump 8. Old cars, little budget, and we counted it a good day just when we got in the, up in the morning both the cars started. That was a good start to the day. You see, but, you know, in, in between, in between I've even learned, I pray for my cars. I've, I haven't chose chose to buy, bought a different car for six years. I like the one I have. It works. It meets my needs. And so I pray for it periodically as I'm driving. I'll say, Lord, if you can heal this body, you can keep the mechanics on this car working properly. 
I have never had to replace one thing on that car in six years. I believe that's partly due to prayer. And, you know, it's, it's just the fact. Uh, but I had to learn to become content. It's not that I couldn't have bought a different car, but it wasn't the right timing or the right situation. And I knew that new car smell goes away in 30 days. And it just, it, that contentment doesn't last long. And then the reality of 30, 40 grand, oh, man, why did I do that, Mike? You drive it off the lot, and there's 10 grand right out of your bank account just for the salesman to shake your hand and smile at you. Now, I know it's necessary, and someday I'll ante up to the table and do it again. But it'll be in the Lord's right timing. Let me just quickly sh- share a little survey with you before we get to the next point. There's a, a, a recent survey that, that talked about our culture. It said the survey said people valued happiness over having more money, the perfect body, better grades, or the perfect job. Learning to be happy or contented is what people really are looking for. The survey then said, and I, now I kind of feel like Richard Dawson, we should be playing the feud. Half of you didn't know that, huh? That's all right. Here's what the survey said next. 85% of Americans identify with a religion. And as I'm reading that part of the survey, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I understand in my community that 85%, if they don't go to a born a, a Christ-following church, they're, they're hanging on to the shirt tails of Grandpa was a member of this church. Or I was baptized or as an infant in this church. That's how they identify religion. So this isn't talking about the 85% of America has relationship with Christ people. Okay? But it went on to say that survey indicated that those individuals that had a strong active faith were far happier than those that don't. And contrary to public opinion, people, it says the survey shows that people who are married a decade or longer tend to be much happier than the single life, than the people that get to date multiple people. So if you've been in a relationship for a few years or approaching 10 or even beyond 10 or getting ready for the museum like I am, it is what it is. You know, in the process of relationships here, what it says, I should be jumping around you know, like crazy with happiness. I am most of the time. Um, but here's the deal. Learning to be content. And here's what I want you to challenge each one of you. If you're in your mind or in your heart, you're looking at the significant other as a C, you need to let the Lord change you and then pray for him or her to raise both of you up. The two shall become one people, is what the Lord said when we marry. Not the two become two C's starting out, one becomes a B and the other slides down to a D and next we're at F and one is out the door. Some of you need to hear this this morning. Some of you just need to understand the process of how to make choices that lead to contentment. Number two, with the Lord on our side, what can men do to us? 1 Timothy chapter 1 or chapter 6, verses 6 and 8. If you want to look at that, it says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us learn to be content. Did you catch in that scripture there? It might have been a little difficult to understand. But in that scripture, it said the exact amount of, of contentment that you and I need as a Christian. As a born-again believer, it gave us the exact amount of what we need to have living in us in order to learn how to become content. It said godliness. And do you know when that Greek word godliness is yeshiva, which simply means holiness or righteousness. You know, I believe holiness and sanctification is a process that's very much so dying out in our modern churches. It's something that is just not happening. And you know what that simply means? Justification simply means just as if I never sinned. Holiness or righteousness or godliness means God is allowed to work on the inside of you. 
You're, you're turning over your secrets. You're telling, he knows what you do in private, people. And if what you do in private isn't giving you contentment, if you're feeling guilt and remorse after that happens, then there's change that needs to happen inside that inward soul so that you can have a lasting relationship, so that your relationships, your physical relationships can go to become a C to a B. Because if you're holding on to garbage that is blocking that union, from becoming a growing to a B level or an A level, that contentment is oftentimes not there. And some of you need to hear this. It's the process of the, it's just how we grow in Christ. I tell people that come on Thursday nights every night, simply recovery is no more than growing in Christ. Some people come with some anger issues, with some depression issues. Some people come that are in jail. Some people come with some alcohol and drug addictions. But do you know their process of recovery starts with a relationship with Christ and then it's simply working towards godliness and let, allowing the character of who they are being changed by the DNA of the Lord God Almighty. And that's when lasting change and when lasting contentment and peace and joy begins to blossom in our lives, people. And your relationships and your life begins to move up the ladder. And the purpose and the destiny of where God wants to take you begins to become reality. Do you desire godliness in your relationships? Do you desire godliness in your relationship with the Lord? Those are questions that he's asking you this morning. He asked me as I prepared him the message. You see, the pastor always gets to know and, and deal with his own heart and soul with different things before the word comes out. That's a question he's asking you. Do you desire to see lasting change and peace so that you can walk into contentment in your life? What changes do you need to make? If you desire that perfect relationship, men, are you loving your wives unconditionally like Christ has loved you? Ladies, are you showing respect for your husband? Are you, or are you putting him down and not acknowledging what he does? Or kind of, I'm sorry if I'm picking you on you for a moment, but sometimes this is what I hear from the men's side, is that they don't get enough credit for what they do. Let me give you an example. It's been a bad season for lawns. Some of us have to mow them. Some of us have to spend more time at watering them right now. But if you look out across the street and your neighbor's lawn is nicely mowed and manicured, and then you say to your husband, well, why can't you mow the lawn and have it look like theirs? You know that, ladies, let me just give you a little hint, is not going to motivate him to do it. Probably what it's going to do is tick him off in his mind, and he would like to retort and say something, but he's moving on from becoming a C to a B, so he holds his tongue. Good man, huh? Let me give you, let me give you a little credit. Now here's what you should be doing, ladies. Instead, you say, you know, the last time you mowed your lawn, lawn, you had your shirt off and those muscles, you look so sexy. Man, I can tell you what. You know what he's going to do after he cuts the lawn? He's going to go water it that night, so he gets to cut it in two or three more days. He's going to think, and man, she thinks I'm sexy when I mow the lawn. Give him something to work with, people. It'll help raise his image of who he is and his worth as a man from a C to a B, and your relationship begins to bloom and blossom. Number three, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear, Jane. What can mere people do to me? And thank you for conquering your fear. Thank you for serving. You see, that, that, the Lord, when we, when we give him control, he'll take our fears and he'll make something beautiful out of it. You know, Joyce Meyer wrote an awesome book called Beauty to Ashes, or Ashes to Beauty. I don't remember how it went, it went something like that. Great book. And that simply means the mess of your life can be transformed into something beautiful when the Lord is in between and you begin to rely upon him. So, in this scripture that we just read, we find out where many people lose our contentment. Many people lose our contentment because we need, 
we think we need more possessions. So we got to get this, we got to get that. I can, I can relate to one thing there. You know, we had built a new house, and then due to an illness, we had to sell it. And then we never thought that we might be able to ever even own a house again. And finally, we were able to, by the Lord's blessing, buy an older house down by, uh, close to Lakeshore Drive on Union, and we spent the next 12 years of our life not only remodeling and renovating that house, but finishing raising our children. And we were so thankful for that older home. But do you know, after a time period, after all the renovations, after all the changes that we did to it, still went and bought another new home. Huh? Why is that, people? Because in our mindset, you not only do we naturally want to become more in Christ, we naturally want to become more of what we can do here on this earth. You see, if you don't have goals, dreams, or visions, you're not giving God anything to work with. And that house was kind of divinely handed to us, in a sense, because it was built for a Lutheran pastor who was supposed to come to the town to pastor a church here. And it, something fell through right at the end. And so right off the get-go, we were able to buy that house for like 35000 less than what it was supposed to, than what, than what the original guy was buying it for because we were able to buy it kind of on a fire sale deal. And so, you know, sometimes those things do happen. Choices, though, what choices are we doing that will lead to a lasting contentment in your life? Do not let the lack of money or the pursuit of it lead you into choices that will not allow contentment to be part of your life and your future. Here's what I know, people, as I kind of close. So many people are searching for the meaning and purpose of life. I'm going to try and answer that question in just one, two little statements. Here is the answer. It starts by accepting Christ as your Lord. That's the starting line. If you've never made that decision to accept Christ as your Lord, that's where you need to start. If you're needing to experience contentment and peace and receive more out of life that you've ever had. And then, after you accept Christ as your Lord, you need to seek what is his will for your life. Begin to determine. Ask him, what on earth am I here for? Let him begin to change you and change your relationships and people around you. Begin to become a man or woman of influence. Be obedient to the changes that he needs to make into you. Let him change you from the inside out. Become, ask him to guard your heart. The next time that you mess up, say simply, Lord, for those of you who are believers, say, Lord, forgive me of my sin again. Help me to have strength the next time when I'm faced with this temptation that I can walk past and make a good choice. And I can praise you and thank you. Help guard my heart, guard my mind. Help me to move from a C to a B in relationship with you, Father, so that I can be a more effective husband, a more effective father, a more effective wife and mother. So I can become a man or woman of integrity, somebody that will bring praise and honor to you through my life. When we do that, people, and serving him with excellence, come back next week and see Pastor Derek in a new season. Some of you needed to hear these choices of contentment. But develop godliness, that yeshiba, godliness, our holiness. Let that become part of who you are, your DNA. Be led by the Spirit and learn to live a contented life. And God will begin to change you and bless you bow your heads. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for, I thank you for challenging me, always keeping me in tune with what you need to hear. I praise you and worship you for that. And right now, this morning, some people needed to hear about making choices, about going, instead of going from a C to a D or an F, moving from a C to a B or an A. Lord, I just pray for men and women right here. Just raise your hands. If you're a believer in Christ and you need to make some changes in your life, I see those hands. There's hands going up there. I see those hands. Just, Lord, just raise their hands. Just give them comfort to know. And if somebody needs to accept you as Lord and Savior, simply just go ahead and acknowledge it. Just raise your hand and say, I'm here, but I don't know if I died tonight that heaven is mine.
see that hand. Let's pray. Just say this prayer with me. Father God, we are here this morning. We thank you for your word and for your plan. Change me on the inside. Help me to become, go up in level and to become more than what, you, well, than what I am. Forgive me of my sins. Lead me into your paths. Help me to know your will for my life. Change me from this day forward. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. No, I was going to, instead of doing that little...